This is the glamorous life of a fashion designer. Jetting around the world, watching your latest collection hit the runway. And if the glamorous life had a reality show, this is where it would be filmed. Designer Jill Alexander works out of a 900 square foot loft in Santa Cruz. It's a sewing corner, cutting room, draping area, retail store, and design center. The glamorous life never looked so cozy. It's a job, and it's a job that I really, really love, but um, all, of the, all of the glamour and, and runway and magazine things that you see, it's a blip. Alexander designs plus-size fashions, only one of 10 independent designers invited to show her work at New York's Full Figure Fashion Week. She's been invited back twice. And the only U.S. designer invited to Europe's plus-size couture show. Both coups for any designer, but for someone in this business just three years, an unheard of feat. In 2010, Alexander showed her designs at just one show, and her business took off. I didn't even have that many pieces, then I brought them down there and we sold out of everything. It was more of a shove, I think, <laughs> than a launch. <laughs> Relatively new to runway shows, Alexander still remembers how she felt the first time she saw her clothes strut down a catwalk. I felt like I was burying my soul. You give birth to this collection and here it is, you know, for people to digest, to love or to hate. You know, you just never know how, how people are going to react. And so far, nothing but praise. Alexander's designs have been featured in several fashion publications. Most recently, People Magazine's style section. Yet this is not the picture of an overnight success. Both Alexander's parents worked in retail. As a teen, she always pitched in. That's her in pajamas helping with a Christmas display. From an early age, Alexander learned the importance of a collection. When we would go school shopping, we were putting together our wardrobe. It wasn't this like, oh, I need a new pair of jeans. Oh, I like that top. It was really thinking from a very early age how all those pieces were going to work together. Alexander took her early training to Ann Taylor and other retailers before taking time off to start a family. It was when she started sewing costumes for her youngest daughter's theater group, a seed of an idea was planted. You have a room full of all of these little kids and they're running around like crazy maniacs, screaming, dancing, and then all of a sudden you dress this little boy like a king, you put a crown on his head and, and his cloak on, and all of a sudden he's a king. And I really think that that is the basis of everything I do is, is I really believe that fashion is transformational. It, it turns you into someone else or maybe who you even really are. Jill Alexander designs high-end fashions for the nation's curvy women, sizes 12 and up, a market she says has been long ignored. I'd love for women to be able to go in and visit a place where everything fits them and salespeople are nice to them. <laughs> and the lighting's really good and the mirrors are friendly and they can go back again and again and just build on their wardrobe. How's that feel across the front? Good. Becky Edwards knows all too well how hard it is for curvy women to build a wardrobe. She's one of Alexander's favorite models and a big fan of the designer's clothes. They're colorful, they're fun, and they're going to fit me, and they're going to be flattering. And that's hard to find. Designs that are bold, bright, and daring. Traditionally no-nos in the plus-size fashion world, but for Alexander, nothing is off limits, as she hopes to revamp how curvy women see themselves. When they put something on that I've created, I really want them to feel like their best selves, like these figure flaws are non-existent. I really hope that they feel beautiful. From sewing together a king's costume to her designs changing the look of full figure fashion, Jill Alexander's overnight success story doesn't have a final chapter yet. I'm not at the point yet where I'm willing to say I'm an overnight success, you know. I'm not even really willing to use the word success yet because I still have so much more I want to do. 